Hey, hey everybody. Uh, so today we're going to be taking a look at a strong induction practice question. So using strong induction show that every positive integer n can be written as a sum of distinct powers of two. That is, as a sum of a subset of the integers two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, and so on. So before we get our feet wet with this question, it might be helpful to kind of take a look at some examples. So like the integer three, well, we could write that as two to the zero plus two to the one. And well, that would mean that we were successfully able to write three as distinct powers of two. And those distinct powers of two were zero and one. Similarly with eight, well, that would be two to the three. And so essentially we were able to write eight as a sum of distinct powers of two. And that distinct power of two was three. So now moving on to our actual proof. Initially, I'm not entirely sure what the base case should be, so we're going to leave that alone for a little bit. Instead, let's start with our inductive hypothesis. So the typical format of a strong induction proof is that we're going to assume that for all j that are in the range 1 is less than or equal to j, which is less than or equal to k, we're going to assume that p of j is true. Right. So essentially what that means is that we're assuming that p sub 1, p of 2, dot, 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 all the way to p of k is true. So now getting started with our inductive step, we're considering the k plus one value. And we want to show that we can write this as the sum of distinct powers of two. Well, taking a look at our hint for the inductive step, separately consider the case where k plus one is even and where it's odd. So let's try that. So in case one, let's say k plus one is even. So if k plus one is even, then we know k plus one over two must be an integer. And so essentially, if we can show that k plus one over two lies in this range, then we can use our inductive hypothesis to help us out a little bit. So showing this, if we can show that this is true, we know that, and we know that k is greater than or equal to one, because we're only ever working in the range of above one based off of our inductive hypothesis. And now k plus one over two is less than or equal to k. Similarly, we end up with the same result. So what do these two tell us? Well, this tells us that our k plus one over two value falls in the range of our inductive hypothesis. And so our inductive hypothesis is now that we know, so if p k plus one over two is true, so that tells us that there exists distinct powers of two that sum to k plus one over two. So this is two to the a one plus dot, 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 two to the ap. And the format for this is a one to ap are distinct, right? So we're looking at distinct powers of two. Now what we can do is multiply both sides of this expression by two. And that would give us k plus one is equal to two to the a one plus one all the way to two to the AP plus one. And essentially what we have just shown right now is that K plus one can be written as these powers of two. Well, there's one other condition that we have to verify. And that's that all of these are distinct. Well, we know these are distinct because we know that if we subtracted one from all of them, we would end up with a distinct number. Therefore adding one to all of them preserves the distinct characteristic. So now that we've taken a look at the k plus one is even step, let's take a look at what happens if k plus one is odd. So in the second case, we're gonna take a look at what happens if k plus one is odd. So if k plus one is odd, that would tell us that k is even. And based off of our, based off of our inductive hypothesis, we know that pk is gonna be two a to the one plus dot, 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 two a to the p where a1 to ap are distinct. And we know that's true because our inductive hypothesis was assumed over the range one to k. So pk falls in that range. So now if we know that pk is true and we also know that k is even, well, if we think about the powers of two that we're working with, the only power of two, which can possibly be odd is two to the power zero, which is one. So based off of the fact that there's only one power of two that is odd and the sum that of all of these is even, 
we know that two to the power zero has not been used yet. Right? Because if we've used two to the power of zero, then we would have had to have produced another odd number in our right-hand side sum. That's the right-hand side sum in order to maintain the fact that K is even, but we have not. So based off of that, we know that A1 dot 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 AP, we know that none of these are zero. And so if we were to write this out a little bit more formally, so we know that K is equal to two to the A1 plus dot, 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 two to the AP. And then if we add one to both sides, we would get that K plus one is equal to two to the A1 plus dot, 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 two to the AP plus two to the zero. And based off of the logic that we expressed above here, since zero has not already been used, we can say that A1 to AP and then zero are all distinct. Because we know that zero has not already been used. So essentially in the K plus one case, what we have just shown is that we can write K plus one as distinct powers of two using P of K. So backing up a little bit, high level, what did we do in this proof? So we started out with our inductive hypothesis where we assumed everything from one to K was true. And then we broke up the K plus one step into two possible cases where K plus one is even firstly, and then we were able to apply our inductive hypothesis because we found out that K plus one over two was actually an element that relied within our inductive hypothesis. After that, we were able to conclude that it must be the case that K, if K plus one is even, it can be written as distinct powers of two by considering the K plus one over two term and then multiplying both sides by two right here. In the second case, what we did was we took a look at the fact that if K plus one is odd, how can it, K, so if K plus one is odd, then we're able to conclude that K is even. And since K is even, and it's a distinct sum of powers of two, it must be the case that two to the power zero has not yet been used because two to the power zero is odd. And we if we have used one odd number, we need another one to account for the fact in order to create an even integer. Therefore, since two to the zero was never used, we know that we can just add it to both sides. And then our set containing A1 to zero are all distinct values. And the final step is actually considering the base case, which we skipped from before. In this case, since we have shown that this is true for even and odds, our base case is actually just going to be P of one. And we know that's true because one is equal to two to the power of zero. And essentially that at this point, we've completely finished with our proof and we're able to conclude that any integer can be written as the sum of distinct powers of two.